medium is the physical link. So, lots of examples of this that we deal with every day. Uh, one example would be a uh, copper wire. So, in other words, if there's a copper wire from me to you, um, we can send information across it as long as we properly design our transmitter and receiver. Can we give some other examples? Air. Air. So, for wireless signals. Um, so that has its own interesting features, including the fact that it's shared by everyone. So uh, there's only one air. So any device wanting to connect over the air has to cope with every other device. The nice thing about copper wire is that if I run it from you to me, there's maybe a little bit of interference from radio waves and whatnot, but not much. Any Fiber. other examples? Fiber. Fiber optic. Fiber optics interesting because um, unlike voltages on a copper wire, light going down a fiber optic cable can't can't take negative values. So you can have negative voltages, and you can't have negative light intensity. Um, any other examples? Radio waves will go in air, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so air is basically wireless. Um, actually, so let's subdivide that. Um, air, radio waves. So the physical link has to do with both the um, the object over which you're transmitting and the technology you're using to transmit. Can anyone think of something else that goes over here? How does your remote control work? Infrared. Again, that has more to do with fiber optics. Um, I have a buddy at the University of McMaster's who looks at laser through air. So, through laser, they're trying to send the data? Yeah, so you modulate the intensity of the laser. Uh, any other examples? We have ultrasound. Ultrasound, that's a good one. Or sound, generally. Um, ultrasound is not commonly used these days, but it is, um, it is used in one particular application. Okay. Submarines. Submarines, yeah. So it turns out radio waves don't propagate very well to the ocean. Um, that is light, so pretty much the only thing you can do is transmit sound. Okay, I think that's another example. Um, so each of these, as I've mentioned, have individual characteristics that the transmitter will receive and need to deal with. Uh, copper wire has huge bandwidth. Uh, it's really good. The only problem is it's expensive to run. Uh, the air is cheap to use, but the problem is everybody's using it. Fiber optics, um, they have their own quirks. Uh, they're, they're akin to copper wire in their resistance to interference, but... Um, not flexible. Pardon me? It's not flexible. Not as flexible, that's a good point. Uh, they have their own, uh, basically they're akin to copper wire. They have much wider bandwidth, but they have uh, uh, unique ways in which you can lose the signal. For one thing, um, amplifiers, optical amplifiers exist, but they're very expensive, so it's much easier to design uh, optical amplifiers using electrical signals than, than uh, an optical signal. Uh, sound. Uh, one of the reasons why it's not used very much is that the bandwidth is very narrow and it's extremely challenging. So um, uh, sound can do very weird things, you can try to, uh, especially in submarine applications, uh, temperature gradients, uh, salinity gradients, um, all kinds of other things can basically form walls in the water through which sound can't propagate. So sound is extremely challenging. Um, okay. For the most part, in this course, we're going to worry about, um, we actually won't say too much about the medium. We'll just sort of assume it exists. The types of media that we're going to be very concerned with are uh, media whose characteristics are basically linear. So uh, there's no nonlinear effects that we're going to worry about. Uh, bandwidth limited, uh, 
capable of admitting uh, negative valued signals and uh, in which the amplifiers introduce Gaussian noise. So that basically restricts us to copper wire and air. Uh, the others have different characteristics that, that are modeled differently. Fundamentally, um, the digital communication problem is, is related, but the mathematics that we're going to discuss don't really apply. Or not that they don't really apply, but they're, uh, they're set up differently. Okay, receiver. This is the hardware to transform the waveform into uh, digital information. So the key problem at the receiver is that if you transmit information over here, <coughs> it propagates over the medium, there are usually heavy losses in the medium. So what you want to do with the transmitter is you want to save energy. So you send the minimum amount of energy that you possibly can. Uh, that energy propagates through the medium, losses are introduced, and at the receiver you have an extremely weak signal. So what you do with the receiver is you amplify, which generally introduces noise. So um, the receiver must be capable of accurate detection in the presence of noise. So what we're going to do in this course, um, again, the two uh, pieces of this hardware model that we're most concerned about are the transmitter and receiver. Those are the two elements of this puzzle that, uh, that are under the control of the engineer and that the engineer can design. So what we're gonna work, what we're gonna do is think about this problem, accurate detection in the presence of noise. That's really the, uh, uh, the issue that, um, that is most concerning to a uh, digital communications engineer. In particular, we're gonna look at two sides of that problem. We're gonna look at how to optimally do this detection. So we're gonna, we're gonna basically this is a detection problem. There's a waveform that's sent through here and it's distorted. And we're, we're gonna try to match that distorted waveform back to the one that was transmitted and see if we can figure out what was sent. There's gonna be a certain amount of error involved in that. So firstly, we're gonna look at the optimal signal processing that you can do. So in other words, given a, a family of waveform, what's the optimal detector that introduces the least error? Secondly, what's the effect of increasing energy at the transmitter or doing things at the transmitter in order to, uh, uh, in order to mitigate, uh, mitigate that distortion? So a couple things there are uh, signal design. So how do we design the waveforms that we send here to mitigate noise? And how do we design the signal processing over here so as to, again, mitigate the noise? Okay, finally, the message sync. Not much to say about that. Basically, the message sync is the user of the message. So if you're sitting over here at the message source, you take a picture with uh, your cell phone camera and email it to your friend, then all of this transformation occurs. If the picture gets transformed to a JPEG, gets transformed into a waveform, gets blasted over the cell phone network, gets received by your friend, gets transformed back into a JPEG and represented on the screen, and your friend is the message sync looking at that picture. Okay, so let's look in slightly more detail at the transmitter and the receiver boxes. 